Welcome back to Business Basics. I'm here with Angie Nielsen. My name's Nathan Johnson. So after establishing who we are, the next part of the strategic plan goes on to creating our yearly plans. This is an assembly of looking at our BHAG and our objectives and our key results. One of the things that we want to make sure we understand is that the delivery and execution of all of these different topics is really, really important in a structure of time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I want to let everyone know is that we have separate videos that go over BHAGs, objectives, and key results separately that will go into more detail on how to set them up. But what we're going to be discussing here is sort of the importance of putting them together in your strategy based on different times and time periods. The period we're also working in for our furniture company is in quarters. Your company may be different or maybe set up however you need it to, but we'll just be talking in quarters. This can be something you can address inside of your business and using business base. So as an example for our furniture company, we've set our BHAG as using 1 million pounds of recycled material. Now, the reason this BHAG isn't directly correlated to revenue is because it covers our overarching goal and impact. If we consume a million pounds of recycled material, that will be correlated to quite a large amount of revenue. So we don't have to directly correlate the two between each other. It will just be a natural progression that our company will see success through the accomplishment of the BHAG. But it helps us move towards our greater goal of what we're aiming for. So one of the things that we look at when we're in the strategy is picking the times that match up with that. So in this example, the BHAG is set for 25 years. So when you're looking at BHAGs within companies or companies you're discussing with, what do you suggest for them to looking at timelines for these type of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal, <laughs> it's got to be that long-term goal. So that's anywhere between typically a 10 and a 25-year goal. So you can look long enough and think big enough, and it's got to be audacious. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be outside of what some people might even think is possible. Mm -hmm. And so you can really push those boundaries. Absolutely. And I think that is really, I love the end thing you said there where you don't want to set goals that just sort of allow you to coast or keep going straight. You really want to set a goal that people would be proud to be a part of. And 25 years from now, it would be a badge of honor to be able to have used that much weight in recycled goods to make furniture. The environmental impact you'd have would be something really to be proud of. Now, please understand these are examples. A million pounds may not be a lot, but these are just examples of things we're using. So the next part is setting out to make objectives over your longer period, which is usually somewhere between three to five years. Mm -hmm. The types of objectives and key results that live within this are something that is more about impacting the BHAG, but also setting something digestible. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, absolutely. And some people... Um, find that it's easier to create more of a theme for those. Okay. So that objective is more of that word goal. So what are we actually, um, what's kind of that stepping stone between what we're doing today to impact that BHAG and something that's, it's a little bit easier, like a middle, not a middle point, but just something that's a little bit more attainable to get to. Yeah, in the example that they actually set here on the uh, furniture company, their objective over three to five years is expand nationwide. So it's obviously to take their store and move it to a couple more places, and that would allow them to move towards their BHAG. Obviously, to distribute that weight of recycled furniture, you're going to need a couple more doors for people to walk through and be encouraged on. The same thing with the key result is that it is to open stores in three more major cities. Mm -hmm. So over the next three to five years, they know that that's an objective that they're impacting that then directly impacts the BHAG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which then what we do is we go to the next step is setting a objectives and key results that are impacted over a year that sort of lead, I think, more towards that three to five year. Yes. Yeah. So what do you think is really important to consider when you're looking at your annual objectives and key results? And please remember that the timelines you're using may be different from what we're mm -hmm. discussing here and you just adjust accordingly. Yeah, and so I think just to keep that either a dam um, kind of illustration in your head or a waterfall, and then they just keep spilling down. So you're working backwards from if this is our BHAG and where we're trying to get to long term, what do we need to do in that three to five year marker to get there? What do we need to do annually? So over this next year, um, so let's just work backwards, break it down, and then you can just take those bite-sized pieces. 
Mm -hmm. So the example that we're using in our furniture company here is to reduce our carbon footprint. So a big thing is that the environmental focus of our furniture company is really they're breaking it down to objectives that will clearly you know impact um, their ability to distribute and generate revenue mm -hmm. then they have ability to make sure that they're understanding how to deliver on their who we are so their purpose and values and they've built all those in now if you were to pull back a little bit and look at them they really haven't discussed you know make more money or hire more people or the general business objectives but the impact of accomplishing all of these objectives and key results will directly influence and impact the success of them as a company. At, mm -hmm. at its core, every company knows what it's doing, how to generate revenue, and what is going on. These type of things are what really add, you know, maybe the accelerant to the fire to get it going faster. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for you to understand that you want these things to be more of a, an impact instead of a direct beeline straight to the revenue. Right, and those revenue goals, they can become the key results because those are the action items. So if, you, if you're if you having a hard time getting out of um, thinking, well, we want to create more revenue or we want this, you can make some of those as key results that you are striving to uh, towards and then you measure that so that but that objective like you were saying is that big picture action item like that that word goal that you're striving to absolutely